Welcome back. It's been quite a while since I've done anything or posted anything, so I figured I would do a video. Um, I have done a video on this map before, but at the time it was just a single quest. It has since grown to include four quests or activities for students. So let's go take a quick look. Oops, not that one. Yeah. Alright, here we are in this quiet little village. We'll give it a second to finish loading. Okay, here's a greeter. She'll just tell you a whole bunch of interesting things about this town. Let's move on down here, across the bridge, and over to the quest posts. We have one, two, three, four quests currently. I have expansion room for nine. If I have to, I can make more. Um, Alright, so let's take a look at this first one. Quest. Picto what? I'll let you read this. So as this suggests, we'll be learning about collecting data and making a pictograph. The directions say to head off west. So let's go. West. This way. Hmm. The graphing zone. Alright. Here's another signpost. Let's take a few minutes to read it. Welcome to the graphing zone. We'll be using this area for different quests, but this particular quest will help you understand what a pictograph is and how to read it. Please have a seat in the bleachers and wait for instructions. Okay, bleachers. Let's go wait for instructions. Alright, so at this point the teacher will be buzzing around the area. Ah, uh, that'd be me. So I'll be flying around here, making sure that all the students make it over to the section. Uh, when they all get into there, I can then freeze them using the student buttons. And we'll discuss about pictographs, reviewing the main points that they have learned in class. Once we've done that, it's time to get busy. I'll ask for five volunteers from this crowd of students sitting here. Uh, by the way, I have 35 students, 30 to 35 students per class. So um, we'll take five students and they will work on this. Example A, how many seeds were you able to collect in 30 seconds? So five of them are going to run around here and clean up my yard. And they're going to have 30 seconds to collect as many seeds as possible from the ground. Once the time is up, each student will come over to the graph and they will place a single seed. All right, so I have some seeds now. So what I'll do is I'll place a single seed inside here. If I was a student, and let's say I collected five seeds. And maybe the next student also collected some seeds and they collected hmm, seven seeds and so on and so on. So what you would end up getting is a pictograph of how many seeds were collected in 30 seconds by these five students. Again, we're just trying to get an idea and get the kids ideas flowing, working within Minecraft, talking about pictographs and using in-game mechanics. Okay, next we'll do an informal survey. Um, the second part of this quest will require the class, the class participation of an informal survey of the protein that they ate last night for dinner. Let's take a look. We have five selections. We have fish. We have pork. We have chicken. We have steak. And we have spider eyes. Everybody loves spider eyes for dinner. All right, I'll have volunteers within the class count. Uh, picking different people to count when I ask who had fish last night, have them raise their hand. Uh, who had pork, raise their hand. And we'll also have volunteers come in here and pick up heads. Each head will represent, oops, did I put that in the wrong place? Each head will represent a student in the classroom that said that they had that. Uh, my students, of course, do not have goatees, but you know, whatever. And then we'll just graph this along the way as well. Same thing. And as I said, uh, we'll be talking about how to read a pictograph. What's, you know, who has the greatest, who has the least, what's the difference, all these types of questions that'll cause them to start thinking about the data that they're looking at as well. And not just, ooh, look at the pretty pictures. Now on to quest two, the fishing tournament. It's that time of year again. Fishing derby is on. Are you up for challenging the rest of the town in a fishing competition? All right, so we're going to head to the fishing hut next door. Well, we passed that when well, last time we went to the graphing area, so, or the graphing zone. Here is the fishing hut. 
All right, we're going to go inside the fishing hut. Students are going to come in here. They're going to notice the crafting recipe for a fishing rod. All right. Hmm. Oh, look, dispensers for sticks. Wait, how many sticks did I need? One, two, three. Three sticks. And we need two pieces of string. Okay, I'm hoping this goes over well. We will see. I'm going to go into a crafting station. I'm going to make a fishing rod. There we go, fishing rod. Now that I have my fishing rod, I'm gonna come out here and get out of the way of everyone else that's trying to make theirs. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna read this. Oops, I think I just cast my fishing rod. In your group of four, find a place around the lake. Once everyone is in place and ready, the timer will start. When the time is up, go to the graphing zone and await instructions. I did look look at that I caught myself terrible all right so students will spread out around this lake after they have all their fishing rods okay I will explain to them from the board a quick demonstration of fishing so we right click to cast into the water we wait for our bobber we wait and just like real fishing we wait and we wait some more darn chicken right behind me I can hear him and we're still waiting and there we have it a fish all right so once you've demonstrated fishing I will come over here to the secret buttons the first one will be a clear all remember once you click this it'll also clear your inventory as well so we'll clear all every student will lose their fishing rod and the fish that they've caught in practice and then I'll give them a fishing rod back so everyone will have a fishing rod Okay, I will then come up here and I will start the fishing tournament by saying click this button, start fishing, good luck. As you will see, this little redstone block here will come down and it'll time it. Once the timer, it'll come down to the bottom, it'll hit this and it'll tell them to stop fishing and head to the graphing zone. Okay, so we're here, we're at the end. A few more seconds, and there it is. Stop fishing and go to the zone. So what I should see is a bunch of kids running around here, scampering up over here and heading this way towards the graphing zone. Hopefully, at this point, the students will have a bunch of fish, and they will come over here. So you worked hard all morning, catch as many fish as you could. Let's see how, many, how you did against your group and the rest of the class. Follow the directions in the center and work together to create a pictograph. So the students will come in here and they will first go, ooh, ah, I hope. <laughs> and they'll see that, wow, there's different groups and I have eight groups in my classroom, eight groups of four. So hopefully they'll figure that one out quite easily. If not, I'll just kind of direct them. The directions in the middle, here are the directions. Each group will go to a board. They'll take a sign from the chest and place it beside their row with their name on it. Oh, I should add that to put your name on it. Place the fish you caught. Discuss who caught the most. Look around at the other groups and decide who won the fishing tournament. Okay. So in here, group one, they will see, oh, there's a sign. I only need one sign because there's four other people who need signs. I'm going to put my sign at the top here and I'm going to say Shane. And if I had any fish, I would be putting all my fish in here until I'm all out of fish. <clears throat> Next person will do the same. When we're done, we should have eight pictographs displaying eight groups and who was who had the most fish, who had the least amount of fish, and then we should be able to go around and decide who won the fishing tournament. And of course, there will be a reward for the fishing tournament winner. There might even be a reward for each of the group winners as well. Uh, what we'll do is I will reward them with the coins that I use for the in-game currency. And they'll be able to spend that in the stores. All right. I'm still debating with this one whether I'll have students do digital homework submissions using either the Google Docs idea or maybe just a book and quill in the game mm. or if I'll actually have them have a worksheet in front of them where they're writing some of this stuff down and they'll turn it in at the end. Anyway, let's go off and do quest number three. 
Okay, here we are at quest number three, called William Tell. Are you good with a bow and arrow? Think you can bullseye creepers from 30 meters? Can you split an apple off a friend's head? Head southwest across the lake to the archery center. And we will test your skills, graph the results, and find out who really is the best shot in the class. So here we go. We're going to head southwest. Well, that would be in this direction. Hmm. Uh, I think I'll just walk around the lake. Or maybe I'll take a swim. Hey, Ken, what's up? I will go swimming. Oh, avoid all the squid. There we go. Oh, looks like there's a building off in the distance over there. I think I'll head that way. There's a dock. Do to do, swimming across the lake. This is the first time I've actually done this part of it, so I'm wondering how long it'll take the kids. Oh, look, Airy. Hmm, what's Airy have to say? Hello, Mr. A. Okay. Torches. I think I'll follow the torches. Do do do. Still looks like I'm heading towards that building. Oh, I lost the torches. Oh, they're there again. Oh, this looks interesting. All right. Hey, Iggy. Hello, Mr. A. I should help them. I should actually make them say some different things, I think. Okay, so they will come to the Archery Center. They will read the directions. Your task today is to do your best. Hit as many targets as you can. Find a partner and head to the stairs. Once you're there, wait for instructions. So students will come along here. Oh, here's the stairs. We'll just come and stand over here. All right. When the students are standing here, I'll come over here, fly up to this magic place here. Again, you'll notice this is a common theme, a timer and items with a clear inventory button. So just to make sure they have nothing in their inventories, I will clear it. And then I'll come over here and I'll hit this first button here, which will give them a bow, 12 arrows, and a stack of wool. They won't need the stack of wool for the practice, but it's okay. I just didn't want to make two sets of buttons. Students will come down here and I will give them a quick demonstration. I'll explain to them, don't aim directly for the target because what you'll notice is the arrow will go below it. You must aim above your target. Oh, maybe not so high. Maybe still not so high. Oh, and I'm apparently a really bad mm. shot. Maybe I shouldn't be teaching them this. Mm. Okay, there we go. We're on a, on a roll now. All right. And once the kids have had some practice, I will come back up here. I will hit the clear button. And I will hit this button again. Well, actually, I'll wait till everybody get into your partners. Come over here, read these directions, and then go find a stall and stand in the archery stall and wait. Once everybody's in place, then I'll come up here. And I will go ahead and hit this button again. Everybody will get their arrow, their bows, and 12 green... <clears throat> 12 green uh, wool, sorry, <laughs> blank in there for a second. I'm going to take my creative mode off. I'm going to come in here. Here's what the kids will see. Hopefully they'll be like, ooh, look, Mr. Austin, I put so much work into this. And hopefully I won't embarrass myself right now in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 12 shots. Here's one. Hmm, I swear I hit that. Okay. Here's another one. All right, one. Two, three. Oh, I missed that one. Four, five. Oop, missed that one. Six. Nope. Nope. Okay, I've taken my 12 shots. I got six out of 12, all right. So what I will do is then I would go in here and I would go to collect my arrows the best that I can. To make sure, one, to make sure that <clears throat> they all turn off, two, because I like to clean up after myself. Oh man, I was so close, look at that, look at that an awesome shot that is. Nobody could hit that. Well, maybe the kids can. All right. 
I'm not very good at archery in here anyway. Okay, there we go. So then the partner will then go ahead and take their shots. Once the students have done that, the partners have taken their shots, they will come over here. I will open this up to them by then. They will come over here and they will graph. Kind of like this one is, right beside here. Let's say, okay, I did six shots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Haha, uh -huh, one better than this poor soul. Okay, what we should see is we should then start seeing a graph pop up here. And I'll have them write their names down here. So I'll put this one here as me. Okay. And everyone will be able to see how well I did. I'm terrible. Okay. Anyway, again, using graphing, bar graphing, practicing collecting data, using Minecraft in-game mechanics. All right. Seems to be a very good combination. Let's go check out the last quest. Okay, here we are at the last quest, quest number four, called The Best Tool for the Job. There are a group of scientists in the woods directly east of here. They are looking for volunteers to help them study something about tools. If you would like to earn some coins, I suggest you head out that way and find them. I heard they pay well, and there are even rewards for, for early birds. Hmm. All right, well, let's head off east then and find out what we can find. Oh look, torches again. Good. Maybe I'll be able to find my way. Must be still going right. Oh, look at this. Wow. All right. We'll come to this area. Students will come out of the woods and come into this area. And then we'll hit this and find that Welcome to the Efficiency Lab. You will be participating in a scientific experiment today that deals with the efficiency of various methods of collecting wood. Please wait for instructions before moving beyond this point. Now how many of my kids will actually not walk across that line? They will sit here and they will test it and test it. Anyway, as long as they're in this general area, I'll give them instructions to follow me. They'll come over here to Dr. Arum. Okay, I'll eventually have him talking or doing things other than just saying good morning to me. He may even just give out the wool that they'll need. Okay, so students will come here. These are some general directions on how to build towers vertically without falling off and possibly hurting themselves. Well, they can't hurt themselves in this anyway, but that's fine. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll have the kids come over here. They'll find a specific spot. I'm gonna pick this one here. Okay, everybody will spread out. We're he heading straight up. All right, well, once the kids are ready, I'll pop up here to, oh yes, another timer with some more gifts. And I'll hit this button here. And I'll get, you'll see that I was just given 64 orange wool. Okay, students will then be coming over here and they will start building. So, turn my creative mode off. I'm gonna try to figure out the best way to build this. Okay, yay, I got up, I made it. This is what the kids should see when they get to the top. There may or may not be a reward up here. Um, remember, again, this is based off of the map from Michael Harvey. Alfie, Matt, and I were kind of working on this and we improved it a little bit. We kind of tweaked it here and there <clears throat> to be a little more scientific and kind of give the kids um, Oh, an extra variable. Okay, so once the kids have practiced making their orange towers of power, <laughs> we will then come over here and we'll start the actual experiment. Okay, so we're here today to determine the efficiency of axes within Minecraft. You'll be chopping wood with your bare hands to start, but then we'll move on to wood axes, stone axes, iron axes, gold axes, and finally diamond axes. Okay, all right, so that's what we'll be doing. I have split the kids, so this is kind of an addition. I have anywhere from 30 to 32, which is why I kind of split it between, at 16, uh, 30 to 35 kids, I'm sorry. So that's why I split it. So we have 16 kids this side, 17 to 34 on this side. If I have an extra kid, mm, I might have to add something here. But anyway, um, they'll start with their bare hands. They'll graph here, just like I did in that with that orange tower. Then they'll move on to the wood axes. 
then the stone axes, then the iron axe, the gold axe, and the diamond axe. And what we should end up with is a huge amount of graphing data in here. Now, here's the kicker. What we did with Elfie and Matt and I, what we did was we said, okay, originally this experiment had the kids going out into the woods and just chopping down every tree they could possibly see for a certain amount of time. And then they would come back and graph it. <clears throat> We've kind of split it. These 16 control group kids are going to come over here instead. They're going to go visit Dr. Wade and they're going to come into the wood farm. The wood farm is, of course, a three by one, two, three, four, and I believe it goes back, I don't know, 18 slots. I can't remember how many, maybe 10. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's a wood farm, so they'll just, of course, sit here. Oops, <laughs> creative mode. They'll just sit here and they'll pound on the wood, correct? And then they'll keep digging. I've marked them, so their number over there should match the number that's here, so there's no confusion. I have this whole section as a schematic, so I can, every in between each round, I can just come back and poof, everything will be popped back in. Not a problem. And we will have brand new wood again. So once they're done, they'll come back here and they will graph theirs. The other students, these guys in the experimental group, will have to go out into the woods all around here and get wood, chopping everything they possibly can to find wood. And then they'll come back and graph it. <clears throat> Once they're done with that, we'll come work down the list. I'll say give them a wood axe. Oops, that's not really not what I wanted to do. Um, So we'll come here, and what we'll do is we'll give them a wood axe. Now I have a wood axe. And I'll go chopping. When they come back, they will have graphed all their wood. I'll hit clear inventory. Then we'll do the stone axe. Same thing. Graph, come back, clear. Move down to an iron axe. Graph, come back, clear. You get the point over and over again. Meanwhile, the whole time, the timer will be going off. Now, this is an interesting timer because at the bottom, it actually will prevent students from collecting any more wood by changing a game rule that even if they chop the wood, no items will actually come out. So they'll be done. They have to come back here and they have to graph what they have, only what they have. So we're a little bit more accurate. All right, so uh, I think we've done a pretty good job with these four quests. I have worked my rear end off at making them as best I possibly can with being interactive with students using the in-game mechanics um, and I hope that it's going, I cross my fingers and hope that it's going to work as well as I think it will. So um, that's it for now. Uh, I may add more to it later but I have so many other grade levels to work with and so many other maps to try to create that I might just leave it the way it is now and see how it goes. If you have any comments, ideas, or suggestions, please post them and let me know. If you want to see more of this type of Minecraft usage, please uh, like the video or subscribe and let me know that I should be creating more of these. Alright, thank you very much.